Professor Zingalitz uh, of Chicago Booth School of Business, uh, you brought out a new book called A Capitalism for the People. In this book, you're calling for a return to the lost genius of American prosperity, competition. Very simple argument in terms of returning to a level playing field and avoiding or reducing the influence of political connections uh, within society. Why have you brought this book out at this time? I think because I am concerned that I see a deterioration in the U.S. economy. Uh, the U.S. economy has always been sort of a, the ideal uh, for most people of a well-functioning um, capitalist system. And uh, coming from uh, a country that is uh, devoted to nepotism like Italy, uh, I always look up at the United States. But uh, I start to realize that uh, Italy, sorry, the United States is resembling more to Italy and not for the good food and the wine, but uh, for the importance of connections and uh, the uh, influence of business and political decision. And uh, it's becoming more and more a, a crony capitalist system. So you would like to see the economy move back to a pro-market stance rather than being pro-business, that the huge corporations have too much influence through lobbying? Absolutely. I think that uh, uh, lobbying has become from a defensive activity to an offensive activity. Uh, I think that uh, most libertarians uh, tend to be sympathetic to lobbying because they see lobbying as a way to uh, defend business from the interference of the government and to the extent it is like that I think that uh, is great. Uh, unfortunately lobbyists have become too good and they learn how to move a step ahead and now is sort of uh, uh, lobbying is designed to shape government policy to the advantage of business rather than to protect business against a, an interfering government. How do you then regard the sort of populist movements in the states at the moment, the Tea Party, the Occupy Wall Street? The way I see is the, the Tea Party movement is fighting sort of uh, the big government and the Occupy Wall Street is fighting the big business. And what they don't realize is they are fighting two faces of the same leviathan, which is the intermingling of big business with big government. That's really the, the common enemy. And until we have not fully appreciated this commonality, I think every fight would be uh, useless. So I think one of the sort of uh, uh, theme of my book is precisely that to say, look, uh, if you care about freedom, uh, you should be equally concerned about excessive government and excessive power of, of business. So are you then basically calling for a return to the, the sort of Reagan-Thatcher years where they were propagating, say, Milton Friedman's uh, economic policies, um, open markets and so on with little regulation? I think that uh, uh, the Reagan Thatcher year uh, were great at the moment they took place because uh, they took place uh, after a period of excessive regulation, of excessive government intervention, and so you wanted to sort of uh, uh, deregulate the economy, get it growing, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, we live through 20 years of uh, triumph of uh, the free market system and capitalism, etc. And uh, at some level, what I'm arguing is that uh, the business has become too politically influential, that for a system to be well balanced, you must have sort of a, a good democratic balance to the power of business. And, uh, and that paradoxically is true for business itself. And uh, as I show in, in, a, in one chapter of my book, uh, the power of finance at some level was not good for the financial industry itself because uh, uh, it got too much its way to the point that backfired. So I think that uh, uh, democracy is a great system of check and balances. When uh, you have too much power in one direction, uh, you sort of uh, destroy this uh, uh, Goldilocks. Why was it then? that uh, so few economists uh, could see the financial crisis coming? I think that uh, uh, there was not uh, uh, a strong criticism of existing practices. And uh, uh, it is costly to criticize. 
uh, both personally, in the sense people don't like when you criticize, and professionally. And uh, while um, as academic we are insulated from most pressure, I don't think that we have retained our aggressiveness and our criticism. And I think that uh, we should sort of uh, start uh, doing a bit of soul searching. And, uh, and in, in the book, what I mention is uh, we economists, and particularly in Chicago, we are very fond of a theory that is attributed to uh, late uh, George Stigler about the fact that regulators tend to be captured by the industry they regulate. And uh, what is appealing of this sort of uh, theory is that uh, it doesn't postulate that regulators are bad people, uh, but simply that uh, the environmental incentives uh, push them to be somewhat uh, uh, too soft vis-a-vis -vis the industry they regulate. And, uh, and I think that uh, we academics uh, have similar distortion vis-a-vis -vis the subject we study. And, and I think that uh, in particular, we at business school, we should be very careful because uh, we cannot be distant from business. If this is our subject of study. We need to know it. We need to interact. Uh, but uh, we, we need to also trying to find the distance to analyze it. Well, in your book, you're saying that uh, business schools are partly to blame for what happened. Why? What, what's, what have business schools failed to do? There are two things. One uh, is they failed to, uh, try to be a bit more critical vis-a-vis -vis business practices that uh, uh, maybe were not particularly good. Or um, I think that uh, when we teach sort of uh, economics and business, we tend to take this very aesthetic approach, like we are pure scientists. Um, and I claim that you cannot be a pure, pure scientist when you are a social scientist, because uh, not choosing or not taking a position, it is taking a subtle position that is even more dangerous. And uh, I have the highest respect for my colleague, Gary Becker. Uh, he had sort of uh, done a lot of contributions, including one on the economics of crime. And then one famous piece that he has is analyzes sort of uh, the decision to commit a crime from a rational point of view, whether sort of uh, the expected benefits of a crime is bigger or less than the expected cost. And um, I, I think this is great economics. I think it should be taught. However, what I notice is that when people teach this subject, uh, they don't qualify it at all. And so by not taking a stand, uh, you end up inducing in the students the perception that if it is rational to commit a crime every time expected benefits bigger than the expected cost, it is irrational not to commit a crime when the expected benefits bigger than the expected cost. And so if you don't do it, you're almost like stupid. And uh, that's not what we want to teach our businessman or businesswoman. And I think that uh, we should take a position on what we think is right and what we think is wrong, and what constitute good business practices and bad business practices. Professor Zingales, thanks for joining us. My pleasure.